Hi there, Jan. Let's take a look at your new set of essays. It's your last set of essays from this set. Let's see what you wrote about green energy. Okay. Over recent years, traditional natural source-based power plants and fossil fuel engines have been replacing by renewable resources-based power stations worldwide. While some believe that green energy sources are not stable and reliable enough, I agree with those who feel that renewable energy sources are cheaper and eco-friendly. Okay. I like the second sentence. I thought you did a nice job of that. But the first sentence had a few problems. Uh, let's correct those. It should be in recent years, not over. And then I thought this expression was strange. Traditional natural source-based power plants. Um, renewable sources of energy are also natural sources. And so I didn't think this was an appropriate term. Um, I think it would have been, <laughs> excuse me, better if you had said traditional fossil fuel based power plants and engines um, if you did that then it's implied that the word fossil fuels goes to engines as well this is a type of cohesion this would have been a better alternative okay and then this should have been have been replaced not replacing um, and then uh, this was also awkward renewable resources based power stations um, there were other kind of more natural ways of saying this. You could have said um, power stations using renewable energy. Okay, that's a nice way. Um, or green energy supplied power station. So maybe based is part of the problem. Maybe supplied would have been a better word, perhaps. Okay, um, so some of those, some of the wording and some of the grammar was awkward here. So, uh, but the rest of the paragraph was okay, so let's move on to your next paragraph. On the one hand, some people believe that a renewable resources-based power grid cannot cover energy consumption continuously. All right, you're using this expression again. Again, it's awkward, and so, you know, we've seen it here, and then we've seen it with renewable resources, and now we're seeing it again here. So, um, also, it shows a little bit of inflexibility. Behind, beside the fact that it feels a little wrong, it shows some inflexibility because you're not giving us other vocabulary words for this. Okay, so an examiner is going to pick up on this fairly quickly. Um, that you're, you know, you haven't been able to give uh, different new um, kind of vocabulary terms, synonyms for this. Okay, uh, this is largely because green energy power plants like solar panels or wind farms are efficient under specific weather conditions only. If there is no wind during summer days or enough sunshine in winter, produced energy is minimum, minimal, sorry. For example, extensive research by the German government revealed that after closing the coal-fired, coal-fired, I can't speak, forgive me, and nuclear power plants, we don't really use this word coal-fired, um, all right, the energy, the country was energy dependent for only one month in 2020. The rest of the days, you're missing a the here, the energy, mostly nuclear, was imported from neighboring countries. Furthermore, it is said that solar panels and rechargeable batteries, uh, this should have been singular, rechargeable battery manufacturing, are not ecological enough and produce a significant carbon footprint because of the use of precious metals in their mining. Okay, uh, so this is about energy security. Um, let's see, so you talked about this, that's fine. And you said that they're not ecological enough, they produce, okay, metals and mining. Okay, um, I would have liked to maybe see a little bit more about this, but um, you did give us a main idea. You did give us some support for it. Do I think it could have been more supported? Yeah, but um, I guess it, it's it's fine. I mean, you've covered what you, you need to cover, so it's fine. On the other hand, despite the fact that most countries cannot be fully independent using, careful with this word, natural resources, they're all natural resources, even um, even fossil fuels are natural resources. What makes them different is that they are non-renewable, so they are finite resources, whereas um, green energy is renewable. Okay, so it's incorrect to call them natural resources. Um, so, most countries cannot be fully independent using renewable resources only. The ecological and economic benefits of green energy are indisputable. 
The central reason behind this is twofold. Firstly, renewable resources like wind, sunshine, or a river stream are sustainable and easily accessible. For example, the installation of a solar panel or a windmill does not require drastic landscape changes and does not leave even any carbon footprint. This is interesting because just here you told us that solar panels did leave a carbon footprint. So this is really rather contradictory. And it wasn't so long ago that the reader could forget that they read that. All right, you did say that they're not ecological enough and produce a significant carbon footprint. And now you're telling us that solar panels do not leave a carbon footprint. So this is really rather strange. Furthermore, wind or sunshine cannot be exhausted and are present most of the days. Okay, um, I'm confused here. Let's see, does not leave a carbon Okay. All right, you have a second leap. Fine, let's, I'll just move on. Sec I'm trying to understand your linking words, that's all. Secondly, solar panels and windmills are mechanically simple and therefore extensive maintenance or parts replacement are rare? I think you mean rare, R-A-R-E, which further reduces the cost of these sources. As an illustration, the lifespan of solar panels is estimated at 50 years on average, you need an on here, and over 90% of its components can be further recycled. Consistent with this line of thinking is that greenhouse gases and toxic fumes emissions of these power generators are minimal. Thus, it is possible to state beyond doubt that green energy sources are significantly cheaper and more eco-friendly, careful here, more eco-friendly and traditional fossil fuel sources. Okay, I thought this was very well developed. There were a couple of extra little grammatical things that I noticed. Nothing really serious, nothing really important. Um, this is what I'm going to show you. And I looked at it, I saw it on a second view. Wind or sunshine cannot be exhausted and is present. Okay, it's a little, little, little grammatical thing, but it's so minor that, like I said, I barely noticed it the first time. Um, okay, uh, is estimated at 50 years on average. I think I already mentioned that. I thought this was strong. Okay, I thought it was a really strong paragraph. I did have an issue earlier with, let me show you. You had firstly, then you had for example, then you had furthermore, and then you had secondly. Um, so I had a little trouble with this furthermore, but then I reread it and I understood uh, why you linked the way you did. One thing that I want you to be a little careful about is overusing um, these linkers. We call these front position linkers. And when you overuse them, uh, meaning in like the majority of your sentences, it's the sign of um, intermediate kind of cohesion. So in other words, it's not the type of cohesion that would get you one of those higher band scores, but somewhere in like that six range. Um, now let me show you what overuse might be. Take a look at this. On the one hand, firstly, for example, furthermore, secondly, uh, as an illustration, thus. So in almost every sentence, you had one of these. And that's something I really want you to avoid. Try reducing the number of these. Now you didn't have, it felt like at least nearly as many here you did have it on the one hand, then you had a this, then you had an if sentence, and you had a for example. Um, so you didn't really have quite as many. You had like uh, kind of a, a, a mix match. Here it felt like you had a lot more of these. So I want you to be careful with them. And as you could see, this one a little confused me. I understood later on what you meant by it. But um, you don't want to overuse these. Essentially, we consider these kind of like... Um, like speed bumps, okay? So when you're reading, they kind of slow you down. They force you to slow down. And um, like I said, more importantly, it's it's a sign of kind of intermediate cohesion rather than higher level cohesion, which is more seamless, which is more inobtrusive and not as obvious, okay? So let's uh, move on. In conclusion, although some green power plants still use fossil, fossil fuel, that doesn't make sense. Green power plants use fossil fuels? Mm, no, that doesn't make sense. Green power plants use green power, like the things that you mentioned, solar power, wind power, and so forth. So I don't understand this. And cannot provide full energy independence yet. Um, oh, hold on a second. I don't understand this sentence, Jan. Hold on. Let me try it one more time. In conclusion, although some green power plants still use fossil fuels and cannot provide full energy independence yet. I believe they should further expand because of their zero emissions and cost efficiency. 
All right. I don't think you meant this. I think you meant something else. It is predicted that green energy will increase and grow in importance in the next decade. Okay. So it was a good essay. Um, it wasn't one that was without flaws. There were some issues with it, as we have um, already discussed. Um, on the whole, though, I thought it was good. Um, just little things that we talked about. Um, I want you to be careful with this this issue of cohesion that we discussed, okay? So I also want to look now at your um, task one. Okay, so let's take a look now at this letter to your neighbor. Dear Mr. Smith, I hope this letter finds you well. I'm writing regarding your white cocker spaniel and related noise issues. I live next door at Golden Avenue 123, and I notice your dog has been barking all day and night over the last two months. Although I love animals and understand this is what dogs simply do sometimes, the continuous barking for such a long period is disturbing and does not allow me to sleep well. This is lovely. I really like this. It reads so nicely. Um, it's inf it's It's neutral. It's neither very formal nor informal, um, but so far so good. I thought you wrote a nice, strong introductory paragraph here. Not only is the barking quite annoying and really has decreased the quality of my life, but I am also a bit afraid of your dog's health. No, I'm afraid for your dog's health, not afraid of. There's a difference in meaning. Um, if you're not clear on that difference, definitely look it up. Fortunately, a good friend of mine is a great vet, and he is willing to look at your dog for free. If you would be interested, I can call him and help you with appointment scheduling. I have attached his business card for reference. If no, Even if I sincerely hope your dog is fit and healthy, I would greatly appreciate it if you accept this offer, as I am sure it would help rectify this issue. Please, do not hesitate to contact me once you would like to call him, or if you have another idea on how to solve this problem. My mobile number is this. You can also stop by any time you see my car parked in my driveway, which means I am home. Yours sincerely. All right, Jan, this was great. This was such a lovely letter. Um, it was uh, appropriate in every single sense. There was nothing to correct grammatically. Um, I think maybe just like a tiny little thing that I saw. Other than that, I thought it was really, really lovely. Uh, like I said, neither formal nor informal, a nice kind of middle of the road, neutral approach, and I thought you did extremely well with this. So this was great, no issues. Um, any sort of issues that exist were certainly uh, with your task two in, in this particular set. Um, I know that I've already pointed out some, some problems that I found with the task two. So, um, you know, just take a look at those again and uh, see if you can correct some of those issues. Now, we have come to the end of this set. Um, there'll be a link in this email, in the email that accompanies this video, if you are interested in signing up for, more, for some more essay corrections with us. I hope that you'll decide to do that. Um, we'd like to continue working with you and helping you progress. I th think there is still some room for us to, um, to improve. So if we can help you with that and help you get you on your way, uh, to the IELTS score you need, then um, I'd really be happy to do that. So um, hopefully we'll see more essays from you. Hopefully we'll continue to work together. Um, either way, do let us know what you decide to do. Um, and I look forward to hearing from you. So best of luck to you.